Hi, in this video lesson, we're going to talk about the second unit of AP Statistics, Linear Regression. The topics we will be covering in this unit are scatter plots, re-expressing data, and association. To begin with, we're going to talk about the vocabulary. Extrapolation. Extrapolation just means predicting a data value that is far from the given set of data. So for example, if your given set of data is from the years 1990 to 2000, and you try to predict what will happen in the year 2010, that would be considered extrapolation. Outliers we talked about a lot in the previous unit, but I never actually defined what it meant. But it just means a data point that is abnormal from the rest. So in the previous unit, I talked about if I had a data set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I had a number like 3000, we would consider 3000 to be an outlier. Outliers can be really high, so it could be a positive number or it could be a negative number. Sometimes it's possible that an outlier is also zero. If your data values are negative 1000, negative 2000, negative 3000, having zero could be an outlier. Lurking variables are variables, variables that are not ex Explicitly, explicitly in the simulation, but and alter the outcome. So, for example, if we are looking at weight versus food intake, a lurking variable could be, for example, the type of food you eat. You can eat more food, but it could be healthier food, and you could lose weight or gain weight accordingly. Next is scatter plot, which is just a display to show the relationship relationship between the x variable and the y variable. So this is an example of a scatter plot. As you can see on the x variable or the x axis you have education and on the y axis you have income. So this scatter plot refers is a display to show the relationship between education and income. So what do these data points mean? So if I take a data point such as this, it means that, let's say this is 9, 100. That means 9 years of education would give you an income of 1,000. So data points, you could have 9, like you could see a lot of data points on the, on the same x-axis, but have different, sorry, same x-axis, but have different y-axis y values, and on the same y-axis, but different x-axis uh, values. But this is how you would, for example, describe a data point. So over here would be 12 years of education gives approximately $25,000 as income. Now we come to association. Association is defined, well, it's not actually a term. It's just a vague term to that is used to determine the relationship, relationship between two variables. Now, why do we say vague? Because association could mean anything. If we say there's an association between two variables, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that there's some link between them. So it's very vague. Now, as, but there are some ways to classify them. So if we have something like positive association, it just means as x increases, so we're here, for example, this would be a, a positive association. As x increases, y does increase as well. So for example, food intake and weight. So uh, so, comma, all these and. so if we increase food intake, we assume that weight will also increase. Now for negative, it just means as x increases, y decreases. So this would be a negative. So for example, it could be speed and time to destination. Destination. So if we increase the speed, the time to destination decreases. Now no association just means as x increases, y can do anything which means like for example you have weight and gpa having a higher weight does not mean you have a higher gpa nor does it mean it has a lower gpa you'd see the data points be very scattered and there is no clear line that indicates a positive or negative association so for example here the correlation which is a more precise term it just measures the strength of association between two quantitative variables the key term quantitative is very important because for correlation, we assign values. You can't assign values to categorical or qualitative variables. Now, how do we give it a value? Now, we have this thing called the correlation coefficient. 
which is the actual value or variable that we assign to measure the strength of a linear association between variables. Now we refer to it as R and it has a domain of negative one to one. So I'll do that. So why do we refer to it as R? No particular reason. It's just that you need to know that it's R. So what do I mean when R is approximately zero? It means that the two variables have no correlation. So as stated above when I was talking about association, if you had an R that was close to zero, it just means that they can do anything as one increases, the other could increase in some situations, decrease in some situations. Generally, it's a very, there's no visible pattern. So for example, as above, I said weight and GPA. Negative correlation means if R is less than zero, but we're still within this border. So less than zero, but greater than negative one, greater than or equal to negative one, which just means, for example, speed and time to destination, destination, as one increases, the other will decrease. Positive correlation just means when it's between one and zero. So it means, let's say food intake and weight, as one increases, the other will also increase. Now, a lot of people think that when your correlation coefficient is less than zero, it means low a correlation. It just means a negative correlation. The closer you are to negative one and one means you're getting a very close correlation or a perfect correlation. So if I had a correlation coefficient of one, it means that for every increase in food intake, every single data value will have an increase in weight. Now we come to this thing called the correlation of determination, referred to as R squared. Sometimes we also write it as R raised to two. So if you write as R squared or R squared, literally R squared. So for example, like this, an acceptable way to write it. So what does this mean? It means R squared percent of variability in Y can be accounted for by the linear model. This is where you'd put your percentage. So if R squared was, for example, 40%, you'd put 40% of the variability in Y can be accounted for by the linear model. You generally want to write what your Y variable is. Now, what does it mean though? It just means that you take your value of R and square it. So if you had a value of R of let's say 0.5, your R squared would be 0.5 squared. And since you're squaring it, it's always positive. Always positive. Your values will still range from, it will now range from 0 to 1 or 0% to 100%. You need to try these two questions. If weight and GPA have a correlation coefficient of negative 0.75, is it positive or negative correlation? And what is R squared? Pause the video and try it out for yourself. Did you get these values? Now, is it positive or negative correlation? It's very simple. Since our correlation coefficient is less than zero, it is negative. R squared is also very simple because it is just the correlation coefficient squared. So negative 0.75 times negative 0.75 gives you 0.5625 or 56.2%, sorry, 56.25%. Writing it in either a decimal form or percentage form is perfectly acceptable, but do ask your teacher how they prefer to write it. To understand how to infer from a scatter plot, there are a lot of things you can talk about, but we're gonna first define a couple of things, or one thing in specific, residual. It is just the difference between what the observed value is and what your predicted value is. It can be positive, negative, or zero. So in your scatter plot, if you predict the value of a certain data point to be four, but your observed value is six, your residual is six minus four, which is two. If your predicted is four and your, and your observed is two, you have two minus four, negative two. If your observed and your predicted are equivalent to each other, you will have zero. Now, how do you determine the strength of data? You need to talk about these six key features. Some situations you won't have the residual plot, so you will have to talk about the other five. Direction. Is it positive, negative, or generally they will have a shape, so positive or negative. Unusual features as last unit as well, it's outliers or gaps. Form. Is it linear or nonlinear? Sometimes you have data that looks parabolic in nature. Strength. This is very, very, uh, biased or subjective to the to how you look at it so you have strong medium weak In residual plot you generally won't have no pattern and your r squared if it's strong association it's greater than 80 percent for strong association now positive or negative 
sometimes it can be neither is very simple what does the general shape look like outliers or gap is there anything that just doesn't gel with the remaining data linear or non-linear very simple strength just means are all the data points the strength really accompanies direction so if for something that is strong will show that a lot of day all most of the data points point towards your specific direction media means that maybe about 60 percent would would point towards that direction and we could be not many point towards that direction but a few of them do and that's why the data is slightly skewed you don't want to have a, a pattern in your residual plot because residual plot had a distinct pattern that means you wouldn't need your regression analysis to predict what what the next outcome would be it'd be very simple to just look at your data and predict what it would be and also if there's no pattern that you would say that you have a, wi a wider variability of your data points r squared of greater than 80 percent would indicate a strong association this is just a general rule of thumb there isn't a specific reason why we will talk about the regret the linear regression equation so it is just using your given data values to predict what your outcome will be so we refer to it as y hat in this equation so this is your linear regression or regression line equation so what a lot of people forget is y hat but what does y hat mean y hat just means your predicted y value given some certain y intercept your slope and your x value so let's go through each one while dissecting what it means so your y intercept just means when your x variable is equivalent to zero what is that predicted y value and this is how you find it your mean of your y value minus your slope times the mean of your x value and what is a slope the slope is determined by this it's your correlation coefficient multiplied by a standard deviation of y divided by a standard deviation of x so your standard deviation of your y, of your y variable divided by your standard deviation of your x variable remember correlation coefficient has to be between negative one and one if you ever get a question that is asking you to determine which one of the question which one of the regression line equations is correct make sure that your correlation coefficient is between negative one and one now here's an example so here i'm using y predicted or y hat to de uh, sorry i'm using my time to figure out my predicted speed so when my time is zero my predicted speed is four and for every increase in my time for one second i have a predicted increase of my speed of 0.2 meters per second so i could have written it like this or i could have put square brackets over here say predicted speed and then for my x i could have put time but i prefer doing it this way because it makes it less clutter as you can see here now if they ever ask you to interpret what this means so for example for slope you'd mean for every one increase in time in seconds there's a predicted there's a we estimate that there is a predicted increase of speed by 0.2 and for for y intercept when time is zero our predicted speed is four meters per second you have to give context and you have to give units if applicable thank you so much for watching this is the second unit of ap statistics till next time